Hi everybody and welcome back. In this video today I will be demonstrating how data extraction within autopsy is accomplished and what some of that data actually means in an investigation. In my previous video I introduced autopsy and looked at some basic functionality offered. I will be linking that in the video description box below. To begin with you should always check that your evidence file has been fully processed. You can see this in the bottom right hand corner if you have a blue bar. Now that blue bar will indicate how much time is remaining until the evidence file has been processed. If you cannot see a blue bar that means your evidence file has been fully processed. When the device is processing what autopsy is doing is going through all the data on the hard drive and trying to extract files and keywords. Today the very first example we are going to look at are deleted files. Now this can be found in the tree pane on the left hand side. So we are going to select deleted files and go to all. So this section contains all the deleted files on the evidence file added. As you can see on this evidence file we have a lot of deleted files. Now this once you select um, which folder you want to look at for the deleted files you by default you are going to see this table view first. Now table view basically offers quite a lot of information and this would usually be what an investigator would look at initially because you have the more the most information here so some of the information you have the name of the file the location so where this file originated from so we have a base location there now if we scroll to the right we see more information we have change time access time created time we have the md5 hash and the object ID. Now just to talk a bit about the MD5 hash, this can be considered the fingerprint ID of a document. So this MD5 hash is unique to each file and this um, it's the same concept for object ID. So in an investigation where an investigator was aware of what the MD5 hash was for a specific document. Now that would be quite easy to find as well as the object ID. Now scrolling back to the left we can go back and view this information again. So basically this table view contains basically most most information you would need and the second view we have thumbnail. So thumbnail view basically offers an image where it can corresponding to a document that was seen previously in that table view. Now like I just mentioned there is not a thumbnail for every single image here so we have thumbnails for only some images but this section can be useful if you if you knew what document you were looking for, what deleted document you were looking for so if you had that information that would make this process a lot more time efficient as you would know where to look and what you were looking for. Another feature within autopsy would be simply clicking so locating a file that you were look that you wanted to investigate further you would simply click on it right click go to properties and you basically get provided with a smaller table but this is unique to the file that was just selected so if you wanted to quickly quickly find the md5 hash for a specific document that you selected you could just right click and go straight to the properties and you will simply find that information under the corresponding name So the next example we will be looking at today is under extracted content and it is called the devices attached. This section provides information about what devices were attached on 
the computer and the evidence file basically recorded it was recorded on the system system hive I will be explaining that further so just a bit more for this section this section basically shows the date and the time of certain devices that were attached now as you can see we have the some device makes and some device models now basically as you can see we have a printer there this basically just shows what devices were attached and when they were attached so that information can also be very useful in an investigation because we have the device make the model and a device ID an example for this section would be a USB stick if somebody was copying data onto a USB stick then we can get the device ID from that USB stick and matched it with if that device ID, if that USB stick was actually attached to this computer their device ID would have been recorded and could easily be matched now if that information was acquired then we could quickly associate that with this computer by quickly finding the device ID matching that USB stick so based on that data we could check what was connected and link that to user activity on this system so another interesting thing to look at is where this data is actually coming from how is this being recorded so this section is under source file we have system now system which is the windows registry file and basically within this you will find um, many system hives so we have system software security and SAM and all of these are basically windows registry files windows registry is basically a database of all the activity that has happened on a Windows system. The system file here contains vast amount of data about the computer and the user who was using the computer at the time and is retrieving this data in this case from the system hive. So the next and final example in this video we will look at EXIF metadata. Now EXIF metadata is basically contains JPEG images which have EXIF metadata associated with them. Now EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File Format and EXIF metadata is additional information which is stored within the digital file itself but it is invisible to the person viewing the image. So if you were to view an image you won't see the EXIF information unless you actually want to see it. So the first step would be analyzing some of these JPEG images which are stored on this evidence file. As you can see like the devices attached section we have two viewing options again which just makes it easier to locate an image. So we have the um, source file again, we have a creation date, we have a Canon, we have a device model so which is um, as you can see Canon we have the device make and we have data source so if we were to select thumbnail we could see all those corresponding JPEG files so basically this section just provides the JPEG images and the table view just provides a bit more information regarding the actual picture itself to view more information regarding a certain image you could either view the information using the file metadata tab or the results tab now the file metadata tab provides some information um, as you can see we have the name the type we have the size of the image um, the um, created date we have the md5 hash once again you can also find more information if you were to go to the results tab as well the interesting thing here 
is that the creation date in the results section is the date added by the camera. So the model is specified in the table view, whereas the creation date in the file metadata tab was when it was created on the computer's file system. So this is quite interesting in itself. Now within this example, which was just shown, we can clearly see two different types of metadata. One being metadata created by the computer's file system and the other type being known as the application metadata, which is basically applied by the camera. So that was that date was applied when that picture was taken. So that is very, very important. And I think it's quite, quite, it would be very important in an investigation because you could match them up because if the application metadata could provide the exact time of the image, that would be very useful in investigation. Now back to this table view. From the table view, under source file, if you wanted to find the exact location or for an image, all you would have to do is double click on it and it will take you exactly where this image is. As you can see, this has taken me to the deleted files folder, which you could easily sh tell by the red X beside the icon, but you could easily just select back and it will take you back to where you were. Now, if we were to look at something else, it would, it would be the same concept. You would just select the folder and it will take you to the location or where this image is being held. All this, all this information can be incredibly valuable during an investigation as an investigator can easily find specific files which can hold valuable information which can ultimately be very important to an investigation which is currently happening. So investigators could really make the most out of this application as it provides a lot of information but this software is used by law enforcement anyway so it's it's a very very powerful and versatile software so as a recap in this video we discussed how data extraction is done and what some of that data signifies and what importance that data has and how it can be beneficial to an investigation I will be creating a part two for data extraction as there is some more impressive functionalities which are provided by autopsy so please join me in my next video and in the meantime if you guys have any questions please feel free to contact me as always my contact details are shown below thank you very much for listening